Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm pleased to speak uh, to these amendments that are a product of the new coalition. The new Members coalition. on my right, Liberal, National, and Greens. The new coalition. We had the Prime Minister come in here. The Prime Minister come in here and speak to a procedural motion. But in it, he said something very significant. He said he was indebted to the Greens. And we know he is indeed indebted on the basis of this legislation. But that's not all, because his Victorian Party president, Michael Kroger, has given up. We're also he's indebted, because a part of this arrangement is this bloke and the Greens securing preferences from the Liberal Party in seats that they believe that they can win. And in return, and in return, in return, the Greens issuing open tickets in marginal seats, which the Liberal Party either hopes to hold on to or hopes to win. That's the game here. That's the game here that is really on. So we have a circumstance whereby, due to absolute opportunism, we have opposites being attracted. That is what is going on here. And this legislation, of course, is designed to have optional, optional preferential in the Senate. And during the Senate debate last night, Minister Cormann confirmed that it would be formal to advocate a just vote one proposition. And of course, what that means is that the up to 25% of voters, of Australians, who cast their vote, not for Labor, not for Liberal, not for National or for the Greens, will have their votes effectively put in the bin. Up to 25 per cent of votes will be exhausted as a result of that. And it says everything about this government, everything Members about on my this rise. government, that their Members final on my act is not to reform anything that helps average Australians, it's reform to help themselves. It's reform to help themselves. It's not about the jobs of average Australians, it's about the jobs of coalition senators and green senators. That's their big priority. Six months of disappointment. Here he was, rose to the Prime Ministership, promised Australians a new deal. The New Deal. We were going to have a forward-looking government that would take the initiative on climate change, on marriage equality, on public transport, on all of these issues. And what we have, what we have, is a government and a prime minister without an agenda. And of course, and of course, he reminded us when he spoke about the need to have the Australian people decide positions and not have backroom deals. Oh, the irony! How do you think you're sitting there, Buster? The Australian people the member for Grainla, for you, The member for Grainla will refer the member for Warringah members by their correct as titles. the Prime Minister of Australia. They didn't vote for you. You got there in a backroom deal, a backroom deal to placate the Conservatives in your own party and to roll over on all those issues that you held dear over an entire career. Remember those grand statements about climate change? You would rather not lead your party than, than lead a party which wasn't serious about action on climate change, when you derided the direct action campaign. Well, it's all there, Malcolm. That's the problem. That's the, the problem. member for Grainler refer to members by their correct titles. About backroom deals. Well, the now Prime Minister, the unelected Prime Minister, the appointed Prime Minister through a backroom deal. That's exactly why he is here. And he has the hide to come in here over this. And now we have a backroom deal between the skimmy wearing no sock senator over there and the Liberal Party. And the Liberal Party being prepared to do deals, being prepared to do deals just to oppose the Labor Party. Well the fact is, the fact is that this Members is on my part right. of a rotten deal between Members you on my and right. the Greens.